Hello, my name is Captain Dan Hanley, and I currently serve as a director and international public spokesperson for a global grassroots effort called 9-11 Pilot Whistleblowers, whose purpose is to show that there were no Muslim hijackers at the controls of the 9-11 aircraft, but that the aircraft were electronically hijacked to employment of a system called the Uninterruptible Autopilot that enables a remote source to take complete control of the aircraft autopilot and flight management computers and fly the aircraft to its target. Now, once this system is engaged, the pilots can no longer disconnect it. Uh, we have a website at 911pilots.org and a YouTube channel at 911pilots if you'd like additional information on us. For myself, I commenced flying over 50 years ago in 1968, first as a civilian, then as a naval aviator, and finally as a United Airlines pilot. And over the course of 35 year career, I flew over 15 different aircraft, accumulating 20,000 flight hours. And I can unequivocally say, uh, since we'll be talking about this, that I could not possibly have flown the 9-11 flight profiles given the speed and altitudes and the difficulty of the maneuvers performed that the hijackers flew, supposedly flew, and neither could they. Now I have with me today, uh, Captain, or I should say Wing Commander Arif Najmi. He was a Wing Commander in the Pakistan Air Force for a number of years. Uh, and also served as a captain and a pilot at Pakistan International Airlines. Now, I'm not going to go into a lengthy uh, in introduction of uh, uh, Wing Commander Najmi. I'll let him do that for himself. Uh, hello, Arab. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you could give us a, a lengthy, detailed description of your flight career, that would be great. Hello, Dan. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, I had been with Pakistan Air Force, a fighter pilot, and uh, I was retired uh, early. I um, in a, in the rank of a wing commander, uh, served there uh, uh, 21 years. Then I was uh, uh, in uh, commercial flying. I have flown uh, uh, A320s and uh, 747s in the ATR. Okay, and what kind of airplanes did you fly in the Pakistan Air Force, if I might ask? Okay, uh, the, uh, mostly my, my bigger chunk of experience there is uh, on F6, the MiG-19s, then A5s. Uh, this is uh, um, the Chinese stuff that I have been flying. Okay, okay. And do you have a rough estimate? From Pakistan Air Force, from Pakistan oh. Air Force I, got, uh, I was retired in uh, 1994. Okay. And can you give me a, the estimated number of flight hours that you flew during that time frame? With Pakistan Air Force, uh, about 2,000 hours. Uh -huh. and, uh, and out in the commercial uh, airlines, um, it is something like uh, 4,500. Okay. Well, you certainly would qualify. Total, I'm, total wow. is uh, about uh, 6,400. Wonderful, thank you. Well, you'd certainly qualify as an expert pilot witness uh, if you were called upon to testify before a grand jury or in a federal court of law. Would you be willing to do that? Of course. Okay. Of course, I will. Wonderful. Uh, uh, let, let me tell you my reason why would I like to do that. Okay. Uh, when I hear about this and the reason they tell, I, as a professional, find it an insult to me how they can give me such a lie. It's a humiliation to uh, humiliation, actually, an insult to my experience, how I see things, how I can gauge them, how I can, you know, uh, get to know if it is right or it is wrong. This is my experience. And when I'm told something absolutely in contrast with it, I think it's an insult to my experience. It is to me as well. Uh, and uh, I would like, uh, I'm gonna bypass the crashes that occurred at the Twin Towers and go right to the uh, Pentagon crash because uh, yeah. that's our smoking gun in all this. Uh, I'd like to focus on 
Hani Hanjur in particular. Uh, first of all, Hani Hanjur is a 29 year old Saudi Arabian who came to the United States in the mid 90s, took some flight training, did very poorly before returning back to Saudi Arabia. And in year uh, 2001, he returned early 2001, he returned to the States and tried to re -impose enroll in jet tech flight school in Arizona and they refused to allow him to enroll because they didn't want to waste their assets on him because he was such a poor student the first time he was there and then one month prior to 9-11 uh, he tried to rent a Cessna 172 from the freeway airport in Maryland and they declined rental for him because he couldn't handle a single engine light uh, Cessna aircraft so <laughs> yeah, it is laughable. Uh, but to describe the Pentagon profile here, uh, American Flight 77 took off out of Washington Dulles Airport, heading for the West Coast. And once it got to cruise altitude for a while, did a U-turn and turned back in towards Washington, D.C. and started a descent. Now, it disappeared out of radar contact for a while, but reappeared. And when he was just west of the Pentagon, the aircraft at 7,000 feet commenced a descending, accelerating 330 degree corkscrew turn to re arrive precisely at ground level without striking the surface to strike the Office of Naval Intelligence on his first attempt. Now, this maneuver was replicated in a simulator and flown by highly experienced pilots, and uh, they crashed every time they tried this maneuver. So. Given these facts, do you believe that this inexperienced hijacker could possibly have flown the Pentagon flight profile? And if not, why not? And if you could be specific there, Arif, as to what skills would be necessary for him to have accomplished that amazing aerial feat, I'd appreciate it. All right. You know, uh, uh, I can't help but laugh. Sorry. I can't help but laugh. Uh, I will relate to, uh, to my experience from Pakistan Air Force. We would go for bombing runs and uh, we were required to you know, align ourselves with the, with the target and uh, fly at a height. And uh, you know how much time it took, how much practice it took to align and to fly those heights, tremendous. Yes. Dan, it is tremendous. I have done that, okay? Yeah. I've been through it, how to align myself with the target, how to get to a certain altitude and achieve that aim. So I know how much time did I take to get to a level of proficiency in doing that in those aircraft which are made for these kind of maneuvers. Those aircraft are agile, they are maneuverable, and uh, uh, they are meant for this kind of a task. And I know what it took for me to align myself with a definite target. It right. took me quite it took me quite many, you know, repeat sorties, time, and, and I would go back, I would think, and I would analyze where did I go wrong, how could I do it better. Only then I was able to, uh, you know, do it uh, later. So it, I, I know it, ha uh, it happens with everybody. It takes time. It takes that particular uh, uh, practice and then one can achieve what it is. So these guys that you just described, I can vouch for, with anything. It is impossible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, you've flown uh, high performance jets at low altitudes, uh, precisely striking targets. Uh, do you think yeah. that you could have uh, flown the profile and hit this target flying at, at ground level and perform the maneuver? Uh, maybe give me, give me 
with the experience that I am now, uh, I'm going to need maybe just three runs. <laughs> yeah, but you could do it on your first try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that answers that. Now you said you flew the A320. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I did. did you fly any other glass cockpit aircraft with the electronic yeah, flight instruments? I, I, oh. I have about about three three and a half thousand on glass cockpit. Oh, okay. Okay. So could you? Basically, describe the distance the difference between, say, a Cessna 172 or a single-engine cockpit aircraft with that of a 747 or an A320 with the electronic flight instrument display and the flight management computers and com control display units, etc. Um, again, this is going to take very long time for one to be able to do that. Anybody, see, uh, Dan, this is uh, uh, for any profession. Maybe you will, uh, uh, a driver, you know, give him another uh, kind of a, uh, car or something. Uh, he will take some time to, to you know, uh, get to uh, how it is behaving, how it is maneuvering. Isn't it right? When when it comes to when it comes to airplanes, we have three axes to keep it, uh, you know, on the profile. Right. Isn't it right? So, uh, so it is absolutely, uh, you know, somebody has to be out of his sane mind to tell that those those early birds were able doing it. Right. Please, I, don't I, fool me like that. I use, the, don't fool me. I use the analogy, you've got this uh, airplane, a light single engine airplane that weighs maybe a ton compared to a hundred ton aircraft that they supposedly were flying would be the equivalent of being familiar with flying your, driving your family car and then hopping into a large semi tractor trailer. Yeah and get it up to a high speed and try to maneuver it uh, without ever having driven it before. It's absurd what they expect us to believe. See, this is what I, I, I told you in, in the beginning. I, I find it absolutely an insult when they come up with a lie like this. Yes, it is. Well, let me ask you this question then. Given that we yeah. both agree that the hijackers couldn't have flown the airplane, and according Never. to the according to the official story, three aircraft, three out of the four aircraft struck buildings that day. If the hijackers didn't fly the airplane, how did they arrive at their targets? Of course, see, uh, in these sophisticated airplanes, they have the autopilots. Autopilots can fly things on uh, as they are told. And when they are autopilots, the machine can do things the first time. They are designed like that. Machines right. and the software, they are designed to follow the profile that has been fed into it. So it will. Isn't it? Yeah. So it will. It does not need any kind of practice or anything it's a machine it's a software it will follow what it is told so how how familiar are you with the uninterruptible autopilot system and what it is able to do oh that's scary <laughs> <laughs> then that is scary uh, it is like uh, when you are on the controls and uh, it is not in your you 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 are sitting there in in the in the cockpit, but it is the uh, uninterrupted autopilot. My goodness, it is. I I, I kind of shiver, you know, if yeah. it happens to me in the aircraft. Exactly. I, I get shiver, really. Exactly. So yeah. give, we know that this system exists. And we, uh, the, yeah, FAA, the FAA even acknowledges that it exists. 
But we have and, proof that it existed prior to 9-11. Uh, see, uh, the, the mere fact that it is, it is such a nuisance, huge, big nuisance value, it has got to be kept a secret. Right. It has got to be kept a secret. Right. Just, well, just imagine you, I'm, I, 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 I actually shiver that it can happen sometime to me flying a sortie somewhere. Oh my God! I I just can't. I just can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just can't cope with this this one thing. Well, we know that it's, this it's was good. a. It's good that they kept it secret. Otherwise, uh, every time I would be uneasy from flying. Maybe those, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, these uh, glass cockpit and FMGC kind of an airplane. I would be very uncomfortable if I knew this thing. How, how did you come to learn about that? Was it through your association with 9-11 pilot whistleblowers or had you heard of the system before? Uh, no, I learned about it from 9-11.org. Okay, okay. Well, yeah. my, point, my point there being, without exception, every pilot we've contacted and asked them to be interviewed, we had to brief them on yeah. that system because they weren't aware of it. They weren't aware that it existed. Yeah, uh, let me interrupt you. Okay. When I heard about it, I had gone and checked and, and you know, uh, searched. And yes, there have been many other uh, sources from where I could, uh, you know, get onto this uh, information. Right. How is it? Right. How long it is? There. I do. Well, the purpose of our website at 911pilots.org is not just to enlighten and educate pilots as to the existence of this system, but also the general public as well, because it offers a viable alternative explanation as to how these aircraft struck the target. And I'm sure that you will agree to me that that's quite possible and that Osama bin Laden could not possibly have had access to this technology. <laughs> Yeah, when it is when it is so secret that me being a professional pilot doesn't know it this late, uh, I'm sure Osama bin <laughs> Laden would have <laughs> no clue about it. Yeah. So well, we did a Freedom of Information Act request for all information that the Federal Aviation Administration had on this system, and they came back with none. So. It's obviously a well-kept secret, possibly a black project that involved a lot of different uh, organizations, but uh, it's out there. We know it exists and we don't, we cannot definitely come out and say, hey, it was used on 9-11, but we can say, ask yourself this question. Was it these unqualified hijackers flying the airplane or could it have possibly been the uninterruptible autopilot? You be the judge there. So why, why, go ahead. Were you gonna say uh, something? Yeah, I, I was, you know, um, when I heard of uh, Malaysian 370. Right. Remember that? Oh yeah. I don't know uh, if it is a conspiracy theory or whatever, but I, I relate the same thing there, uninterrupted autopilot. Exactly. As a matter of fact, yeah. I'm in touch with a New Zealand author that just wrote, written a book. We were just chatting today. It's called Lies and yeah. Deceit. And he goes into great detail about Malaysia Air 370, but also Malaysia yeah. Air 17. And there's also the Metro jet that crashed over the uh, Gaza uh, a few years ago. We have on our website on the remote control page, an excellent video at the bottom by a Christopher Boland being interviewed on a London uh, radio program. And he goes into detail explaining the wild gyrations that uh, Metrojet went through before it crashed. So uh, the official story on that one was that it blew up in the sky, but the debris field was too concentrated for that to have occurred, leading one to conclude that the airplane actually did crash. So, uh, we have a lot of reasons why we're doing this. We're going to turn 
this video as well as other interviews we've done over to a group of lawyers in hopes that we can get enough evidence and pilot testimony to present evidence packages to a U.S. attorney so that they can, we can force them to convene a grand jury investigation into our allegation that these hijackers didn't fly the aircraft. So we have a number of other reasons for doing it, but one of them being the 9-11 Commission did not constitute a criminal investigation. A lot of people think that it was, but it was not. And I want to point out that not one single pilot was permitted to testify before the grand jury, I mean, before the 9-11 Commission, as to the absurdity of this ludicrous notion that these hijackers actually flew the aircraft. Uh, and I think that you'll agree with me here, Arif, uh, the reason why perhaps 99% of the global population fell for this story is that they're not pilots and they cannot conceive of the absurdity because they're not familiar with flying, they're not familiar with airplane cockpits or the maneuverability of different types of aircraft. Would you agree with that? Yeah, of course I do. And uh, um, when you are, uh, you know, going around interviewing pilots or uh, you've done a lot, uh, Dan, uh, keep up your, your uh, good work. Uh, I would be very interesting, interested <clears throat> if you tell me if you ever come across any pilot who would say that uh, those uh, uh, Arabs, it was them who did it. Did, right. did, did, uh, did, did you come across anybody, we, anybody we, professional? No, we haven't. We <laughs> haven't yet. And we've got people lining up. Uh, to be yeah. interviewed because they want to testify that yeah. they couldn't have done it. So uh, anyhow, do you have any other closing comments here before I wrap this up, Eric? Uh, you know, uh, lies will need to be covered or with board lies. So uh, if you are keeping up your, your uh, crusade, it will come out. Let the world know what happened. Well, there's a very I, I'm I'm the public spokesperson of the big mouth for the organization, but there are other <laughs> pilots and other people behind yeah. me behind the scenes. So you have uh, we are you have suffered. You have suffered because of this. Uh, you know, you want to bring this uh, lie out to the world. You have suffered because of uh, whatever your uh, uh, work has been. Uh, and I only wish that you continue with uh, your perseverance and uh, good luck. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for taking the time to be interviewed, Wing Commander Arif Najmi. And thanks for Probably. all those who uh, viewed this uh, interview. Please be sure to leave. We're going to put it on YouTube, but please be sure to leave. Uh, your comments at the bottom and share it on uh, your favorite social media outlets, as well as with your interest and concern, family members, friends, and neighbors. And uh, if you are a pilot and you want to be interviewed, it's very easy. Simply go to the 911pilots.org website. And at the top of the page, there's a join us tab. Just click on that. All we need is your name, email address, and there's a comments box at the bottom of the page. And if you put in there the type aircraft you've flown in that comments box, we'll contact you for an interview. And I wanna note here that you don't have to be a pilot to join us. Members of the general public are welcome to join and they are from all over the world. We just wanna increase readership on our website. Uh, so please be sure to tell all your family members about 911 Pilot Whistleblowers at 911pilots.org and 911 Pilots Go to our uh, uh, YouTube channel, subscribe to it, and share as many videos there as you can on your social media outlets. Anyhow, thanks again for joining us. Uh, and thank you again, Arif. Until next time, it's Captain Dan Hanley and Wing Commander Arif Nasby signing off and saying so long. <laughs>